While the G-Shock has long served as an icon of affordability and durability, the so-called Cassie Oak G-Shock released back in 2019 has carried the brand to new heights among both enthusiasts and the mass market alike. And in this video, we'll share three things to know before looking to buy the Cassie Oak from the now broad collection. So just what we're gonna look at here today, first some background on the model family, then move into a general overview and how to use and set these watches, then move into an understanding of the key pillars to understand understand also which watch might be right for you. Now we're gonna be talking specifically, of course, about the Cassie Oak here, uh, but we are an authorized dealer for G-Shock. So if you're liking what you're seeing here today, definitely recommend checking it out because we have a wide range. In addition to that, the DW5600 series, this is probably the one that's gonna emulate the similarities of the original 1980s version. We dropped the black black versions from a helicopter and they withstood the fall from quite a height. Also the camo versions, the clear versions. You could also look at the GBX models, which are going to have some great water resistance and a nice LCD screen and a tide indicator as well to go along with it and fit the theme. We'll have an entire collection in the description down below that you can get lost in if you want to shop around. So for those wanting a more comprehensive backstory on G-Shock, I will link to our video looking at G-Shock at large down below. But for this video, we wanna focus on the aforementioned GA2100, or more informally known as the Cassie Oak, that was released back in 2019. And upon its release, it immediately was able to serve as a bridge connecting both longstanding G-Shock lovers with mechanical enthusiasts who loved it for its analog display. This $100 watch immediately ascended to the top of the watch enthusiast attainable hierarchy, spawning countless variations, as well as luring in the modding community with feverish intensity. Casio followed up with the GAB2100, offering Bluetooth functionality and the later creation of the full metal variants that without a doubt created the most conversation of any standard production released from the brand in the past 12 months. Moving into a conversation on the case and wearing experience presented by the Casio family, the actual dimensions vary slightly between case materials with the basic resin case GA2100 offering a 45.4 millimeter wide by 48.5 millimeter long case with a surprisingly svelte 11.9 millimeter thickness. And while those are broader metrics on paper, the watch wears smaller on wrist, feeling more like a 40 and a half to 41 millimeter case in my experience, thanks to the smaller dial presentation and compact lug to lug that hugs to the wrist. For the steel versions, I would add probably one millimeter of theoretical wearing dimensions based on my estimations of wearing them. They do wear a little bit larger. Case design is defined by the octagonal bezel, which also serves as the inspiration for the enthusiast and pointed Cassie Oak nickname. Interestingly, the designers at G-Shock claim that the framework evolved from the original 1983 G-Shock bezel, as opposed to being directly inspired elsewhere. I will let you all decide for yourselves. Emerging from the case at almost 25 millimeters wide, the resin strap Cassie Oak models lean into a format that is familiar from the other G-Shock models, including the iconic DW5600 collection. For bracelet equipped pieces, including the full metal GMB 2100D series, the hardware is surprisingly solid, with solid end links paired with a stamp clasp and a level of finishing to stay closer to the Swiss brands that you might expect in this price range. It also is worthy of mentioning that the third party modding community also has some additional options for uh, bracelets that you can pair with your watch. As of right now, all Cassie Oak models offer a mineral glass crystal, making it the most susceptible part of the watch. But with that being said, the outwardly positioned bezel does a nice job of protecting the embedded crystal while still giving a clear view of the analog digital display. More than with traditional quartz or automatic watches, this Cassie Oak has a dial and movement concept that feels more like one singular creation. With the analog digital display providing a feature and information rich portrayal of everything a modern G-Shock can do. One of the central themes is its three-dimensionality with indices and sculpted rehot at the outskirts, on the entry level Cassie Oaks, the display at nine indicates the day of the week with a slightly modified sub register on the Bluetooth enabled models, which will indicate what mode the watch is in with tiny printed abbreviations denoting each particular function. Set between the three and six o'clock, the smaller display is integrated with a faceted cutaway that reveals the digital aspects of this analog digital layout. The handset is a straightforward stylized baton shape and the hands and some of the dial offer luminescent material that while helping right after after being exposed to a light source quickly phase. Luckily with this being a G-Shock after all, a more useful pair of button activated lights illuminate both the digital display 
and a small light for the broader analog dial. And like all G-Shock models, this collection is powered by quartz timekeeping, either with or without the help of Bluetooth to connect to smart devices. And with either standard battery operated Casio models, as well as tough solar and Bluetooth enabled options to choose from. The general functionality and operation of these buttons are more or less the same, but let's quickly run through how these actually work. To operate or set your Casio, the lower left button moves through the watch's timekeeping modes, including local time, world time tracking, 48 cities, stopwatch, countdown timer, and alarm modes. The upper left button can be held for two seconds to enter the setting mode, or can be used to accept a new setting and return to standard functions. Generally speaking, the upper right-hand button activates the light during normal operation, but can also be used with the lower right button to change values when setting the watch or toggle through settings within a given mode. Once everything is set, you simply hit the upper left button and the hands will automatically rotate to match the digital time that you've selected. On Bluetooth models, the layout is fairly similar, except you don't need to set the time yourself. The watch pairs with your phone and the Casio Watches app to provide updated time adjustments throughout the day. And if you need to force the sync, you can simply press the lower left button. Of course, there are numerous other features, settings, and aspects to operating these watches, but I did just want to provide more of a basic guide on how you can get started. So with that out of the way, what are the four key pillars as it currently stands that you can get lost in? What are the differences? Now, this is not meant to be comprehensive as there are many different models that are always being released, but these are probably the pillars that I would look for if you're looking to buy your first uh, Cassie Oak. If you want to begin your journey with the most entry-level version, look at the GA2100, which spans countless colorways at this point. The GA2100 are the non-Bluetooth enabled, so there's no quicker setup, but in the process, you do save some money and they are absent of the Bluetooth logo on the dial if that's worth anything to you. And these have starting retail prices at $99. The next jump up would be the GAB2100, essentially taking the GA2100 and adding Bluetooth functionality. If seeing Bluetooth on the dial isn't enough, you will also be able to notice with the additional B in the reference number that this is going to have that Bluetooth feature. Based on what I can tell, the Bluetooth models appear to be a bigger priority for Casio at the moment, and with prices starting at around $150 retail, make them not far out of reach compared to the conventional GA2100. The next jump up is with the GM2100, the first introduction to the metal collection. This offers the framework of the GA2100, but opts for a steel central case instead of the resin case. These do not come with metal bracelets or Bluetooth, but you could argue that these are currently the best bang per buck within the entire collection, depending on what you value as a consumer with prices starting around $200. And finally, we have the GMB 2100D taking the Bluetooth functionality and fusing it within the GM2100 case while complementing with a metal bracelet. It was originally launched with three different variations, the gold tone version, the charcoal or slate version, and then the traditional stainless steel option with starting prices at $550. The Casio has become a heartthrob of both enthusiasts and the mass market. There's a lot to get lost in. They're certainly not watches that are gonna be for everybody, but with its fusion of digital analog display and octagonal type of case structure that makes it pretty recognizable if you look at the realm of watchmaking nowadays, it does make these watches pretty appealing. And even if you're not a typical G-Shock lover, these seem to be the watches that get people over the edge to maybe take the first step into this world. But all right guys, that is a rundown of the Cassie Oak collection. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell icon, really would appreciate that. Also for all of you Cassie Oak owners out there, what would you recommend as the best place to start within the collection? What do you personally own? What do you like? What do you not like about them? I know that there's plenty of owners that are probably watching this video, so any comments down below, I know would help other people looking to buy one of these watches. Also, if you like what you saw here today from these watches, recommend checking it out on teddyballerstar.com. I know you can buy these watches essentially anywhere, but how we're able to create this content is through selling watches on our site. Uh, we don't take money from the brands to create content like this on this channel, so if you wanna support the content content here and allow us to keep doing it, that is a great way to do it. Also, we have a wide selection of G-Shock models that are all curated by myself. So I'll have a link to that complete collection down below. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.